What a special treat today on this special edition of Playing the Field. I'm Ryan Field, the sports anchor here at Eyewitness News. Joined now by our usual guest, Jen Matarese, our Bachelor Insider from WABC here in New York, and Gina Sirico, our Bachelor expert from our sister station, KABC in Los Angeles, and our guest of honor, Daisy, is here from The Bachelor. And Daisy, we are so excited to have you. Thanks so much for coming on. I guess the first question right off the bat is, how much has your life changed? How different is your life now since this show has taken place? Yeah, thank you for having me. It's a lot different. It's all really good things, really exciting things. So I'm really grateful that I got um, the feedback that I did from the audience and the fans. And I'm just really excited to see where I go from here. But yeah, it's completely changed, but all good, exciting things. Okay. Among those exciting things, you moved to California, I heard. So what's going on in California? What will you be working on? And is there any more reality TV or Dancing with the Stars maybe in your future? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so I lived in San Diego or I, I went to school there and then, yeah, moved up to L.A. right after the show got done filming with one of my best friends. So right now I'm working on my nonprofit, working on another children's book and a memoir, also working on doing some more public speaking engagements. So really excited about all of that as reality TV goes. No, not in the future <laughs> yet, um, but that's OK. Um, Dancing with the Stars? No, but I would be down to do that. Ooh, could be a scoop. Could I, be a scoop. <laughs> I could see it happening. I could see it happening. I think that would be fun. Let's talk, Daisy. Let's go back to the beginning and to how we met you and where we met you. I would love to know, you know, you see the Bachelor Mansion behind me. I was never a contestant on the show, but when I drive up to that mansion, like there's a certain kind of feeling that, you feel when you go in. So for you, what was that feeling for you when you first kind of got there knowing that this was going to be the start of a journey that was life-changing for you? Yeah, I definitely was really nervous. And I was also like, I don't know how this is going to go. And then walking out, it's kind of like a surreal feeling. (laughs) You're like, oh, it's happening. Because I've seen the show before, but I never thought I would actually be on it. Um, but then, yeah, walking up and you walk into a group of a bunch of girls and it is pretty crazy, um, but definitely one of the cooler experiences of my life. Well, we had such a joy watching you on that show and safe to say you were one of the fan favorites. There is no doubt about that. And watching your journey with Joey just endeared you to so many people. Kind of take us through that journey and when you started to have feelings for Joey, when you thought he could be the one, and conversely and sadly, when you could feel it kind of uh, losing, kind of falling apart and you kind of losing your grip on the situation. Yeah, definitely. I think I came in with no expectations. And then right when I met him and we had our first initial conversation, I kind of realized that there was something there and then we had our first one-on-one right away. And from then, every conversation that we had, I felt we were always progressing and always in a good spot and we did get along really well. Um, And then I think it was just my feelings kind of building up and building up. And then in Jasper, when he met my family, that was when I like fully realized that I was kind of all in it at the time. And then... I would say that was kind of the peak of it. And then, um, as everyone saw, fell apart. (laughs) But, you know, it all happened the way it was meant to. And I believe, like, it was a scenario where me, Kelsey, and Joey, we all kind of understood. And it was the best case scenario for everyone involved. So when you're there on that last final date, How did you not burst into tears or just like when you had that awful feeling like things were not going how you wanted to go? He was saying things like about the future that's sort of like, I wish us both well or whatever he said. Whether it's with you or with someone (laughs) else. Exactly. Wait, what is he saying? Like, how did you kind of hold it together? And like, were you just kind of waiting and seeing or how did how did you manage those emotions? Yeah, I think. It was, I was still processing everything as it was coming, but I also realized I think everyone 
at some point has been in a relationship where they realize that the other person might not be completely in it. And sometimes people tend to stay and wait for that person to kind of give them like the ending. And I think I was processing everything and I was realizing that, you know, it like it wasn't me and he wasn't feeling this way towards me. And it was just me processing everything and kind of gathering it. And ultimately, I like I knew he didn't want to be with me. So that's kind of part of the reason I did what I did, too. Um, But yeah, it was hard. And I think I have such respect for him and Kelsey. So I didn't want to leave in a way that was hurtful or mean um, or like anger because I didn't have any of that towards them. I just knew it wasn't me. And even though in the moment it hurt, that was okay. And I was still able to be happy for them. And I think that's the interesting thing about like us being human and feeling emotions is that you can feel like sadness, but also happiness at the same time. Like emotions are so complex. And I think it was me just coming to terms and feeling everything. But I knew that I wanted to like show them that I was happy for them and supported them. In those moments when you went to go see Kelsey, that you're talking about emotions, like that was one of those things where you had, you felt like every emotion because you got, you choked up when you got there and you started talking to her. But I feel like we saw the evolution and the processing as it was happening. So talk about those moments and those conversations that you were having, because I feel like I know we didn't see all of it. So just mm-hmm. talk about kind of, how you guys got to each other and how, um, you know, just how you were feeling and especially as you were walking into the car together. Yeah, so definitely me and Kelsey were friends throughout the whole show, especially towards the end. And I knew it wasn't me. And I wanted her to know that, like, I supported her and I wanted her to be happier. And like you said, um, like, the conversations are, like, cut. um, And, but... You know, it was a really special moment between me and her, and we'll always have that. And yeah, going to the car, it was just, it was very like uplifting. And we were both, we both knew it was right. And we both knew like I was going to be okay. And that like I still wanted this to be one of the happiest days of her life. Um, And so it was just both of us supporting each other. And it was a really special moment. Was that your idea to ride in the car together? And how did that whole thing come about? And, and watching it as a viewer, I was nervous that you guys were both going to walk up to Joey together on the beach and say, all right, buddy, you got to pick between. <laughs> no, that would right be now. interesting. <laughs> that would have been. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, she she initially said, do you want to ride together? And then it was kind of a decision that we made together. So. Do you think that when you were standing out there with Joey, he was surprised and could you feel his relief? And when, when you said that you knew it wasn't you and that you were handling it so graciously? Yeah, I think he was definitely relieved. And I think that's kind of why he got so emotional too. And it, cause it did throw him off a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also knew it was really hard for him to do. And so I think it was just both of us having that mutual respect for each other and we did learn a lot about each other during this time and so yeah I think it was probably relieving for him to know that I knew it wasn't me but also know that I knew I was going to be okay and it was for the best I love that I have to ask there were you know let's talk about now after like you came home from Tulum every you know life was kind of resuming the show was starting. There were a lot of spoilers out there that said it was you. And yeah. so I, for me, like, all I keep thinking is like, now you have to, you know what happened, obviously, and you can't say anything. So how do you, how did you kind of, kind of navigate those emotions, knowing that it wasn't true, knowing that everybody was talking about it? How did, how did you kind of navigate that? Yeah, when I saw the first spoiler. I was in the airport actually flying back to San Diego and I almost, I think I like almost dropped my phone and fell over because I was in my shock. Um, And you know, it was something at first it was hard. And then I was like, you know, I can either take this and be like sad about it and upset about it or I can find a way to like be more positive about it. Um, 
But yeah, it was a little tricky to navigate, especially because only like the people who are close to me in my life knew the actual truth and what happened. And so just kind of navigating and people, congratulations, we're so excited for you. (laughs) You know, like everybody telling me congratulations. But I know like it wasn't, it was coming from a good place. Like no one was, because nobody knew, but it was, yeah, it was a little bit uncomfortable. I think it was uncomfortable for probably all three of us. (laughs) Um, But, you know, it happened, but now it's all out there what actually happened. So I, I'm i very relieved, and I think they are too. Well, that kind of brings me to my next question, one that I've wondered now that the dust is settled and the show is over. We've seen so much online gossip about you in terms of who you're dating now and so many of these rumors that are just flying around on the internet. What's been your favorite one so far that couldn't be furthest from the truth that you had to crack up that you read about yourself? Um, honestly, the one that I was, was when it got dropped that I was engaged to Joey, that was the most shocking. <laughs> and I was like, okay. I'm like, people are going to be absolutely like shook at the end because the spoiler that came out, I guess he's like never wrong. Um, and yeah, it was a lot to process for me at first, but I think that was definitely the most crazy thing. And yeah. I mean, it's so interesting, though, being on this show because everybody thinks they know what's going on in your life, even when they don't. So it's been kind of funny for me and my friends that I'm like closest with because they'll send me like something or a TikTok someone made or something. Mm -hmm. And it's it's just funny because people think they know you and in a way they do, but they don't know what's actually like completely going on in your life um, unless you share it. But yeah, so there's been a lot going around, but I would say that would be the most shocking. Well, I think a lot of people were shocked that you turned down being the bachelorette, but I mean, obviously you have your reasons and I was wondering, you know, what led to that decision and how do you feel about it now that someone else is in that role? Yeah, I ultimately, I know I had to do what was best for me. It was a hard decision, but I know afterwards I was wondering how I was going to feel about it but I feel really good in my decision and I know it was the right decision and so yeah I don't I don't regret not doing it at all I think you have to do what's best for you and if I've learned anything the last few years it's that you really have to like listen to yourself um, and put yourself first especially when it is something like this And so that's what I did. And yeah, I'm really happy and proud of myself for doing that. Daisy, I know, first of all, I, I, we have to thank you for your time because I know that you have a lot going on. Um, and I'm so thankful that now that I know you're here in LA as a fellow LA girl, (laughs) what's been your favorite thing about being in LA? What's have you, have you done something that you're like, yeah, this is amazing. And then do you, what else do you have on your LA bucket list? Honestly, the food, everywhere I go, the food is so good. So I'm excited to try more restaurants. Um, It's a fun spot to be because I have a lot of friends from college that moved up here. I also have some of the girls on The Bachelor that I'm close with live up here. So I'm just excited to do more things and get more involved um, with whatever I can. I have a list. Okay, you'll have to send me the list. Absolutely. You got it. (laughs) Well, we'd love to have you out here in New York, too, and we can do the uh, question that no one knows the answer to for sure. Who has better food, New York or L.A.? That's what I think <laughs> we need to have you out here for. It's got to be New L.A. York. Really. It's got to be New York. <laughs> Daisy's going to be the deciding opinion here as to who has yes, the better food. Yes, I'll have cuisine. to come to New York and test out all the food, and then I'll make a decision. <laughs> well, we would love that. And listen, we know you've got a very busy schedule, and... We can't thank you enough for coming on the show, as Gina said, and we wish you the best of luck. And uh, as part of Bachelor Nation, we can't wait to see what happens next for you. Thank you. That means a lot. I really appreciate it. Thanks we for having me. We'll be rooting you on. Thank you. Yes, we will. Thanks, there she Daisy. is. Thanks, Daisy. She is exactly the person who I thought she was. I know. So She's kind, lovely. so genuine, and so real 
And I thought, you know, throughout this entire season, she's been so gracious in terms of how she's handled herself, uh, especially given what she's had to deal with in her life with her hearing loss and everything else and how much that has shaped her as a person and as her character. And, you know, seeing her relationship with Joey, so many people, Jen, were hoping that she was going to be the one. The I know. End. She's handled it all so well, though. And I have to think the right person's just around the corner for her because she's wonderful. Yeah, she said it, you know, in the in the finale, you know, as she was leaving, she said, you know, if I could love, you know, love mm -hmm. that the wrong person like this, imagine the right person. And I cannot wait to see the right person come in. But also, <laughs> you know, she as just as a woman, like, is amazing. She is she's gone through so much. She's working on a nonprofit. She's writing a book. I can't wait to read her story. Mm -hmm. I love what we got to see on the show and today, and you know, in chatting with her. I can't wait to see, read more and hear more about her because I think she's pretty extraordinary. You guys are, I, I watch the show like everybody else, but it's kind of like when I take a test. I, I take the test and then an hour later, <laughs> if I try to take the same test, I've forgotten everything that I just <laughs> learned. So my memory when it comes to this stuff is not great, but if we can look back at Bachelor history and where her response to Joey at the uh, altar, if you will, quote unquote, mm -hmm. in Tulum when she tells him that, where does that rank? Is is that a top five, top three, all time moment in Bachelor history, would we say? For rejections? Just in general, <laughs> I think, yeah, rejections or anything across the board. I yeah, mean, I, I mean, okay, be... if I, all of them, sure, I'd say top five. As far as rejections go, it's in my top two. Wow. Mm -hmm. Behind? Behind Claire Crawley's, yeah. which she threw a <laughs> bit and left. <laughs> Gina, oh how about God. you? <laughs> I would say, and here's the thing about it. I would say it was dramatic, but not in the drama that we're used to. Mm -hmm. Like some of the drama that you see in some of the finales is kind of petty and, you know, all of that. This was so mature and just yes. so like it was so beautiful and like the perfect way to kind of wrap up what has been a really amazing season. Mm -hmm. That is well said. And I do remember my all time bachelor moment okay. when Jason ended up choosing Molly in the after the final rose. <laughs> and that was before Twitter. That was mm -hmm. before social media. And I remember my phone. And that's back when everybody was watching The Bachelor. And when that moment happened, my phone was blowing up. Everybody's phone was like, can you believe this is happening on live TV right now? That Jason has pulled a 180 and changed <laughs> his mind and picked Molly. I think that one for me will all go down, always go down as one. He was the the and then there was Ari. Yep, Ari. Ari was one too, yeah. Yeah. Brad Womack, who can forget him? Oh, How about God. When, yeah. I like when they had Brad and Chad on, and then the girls had to determine who was which twin it was. <laughs> oh, they didn't gosh. know if it was Brad or Chad. That was a good Bachelor moment. See, I guess I remember more about The Bachelor than I back. thought. Yeah, the more you talk back. about yes. it, it just comes back. Deep in the back of my uh, <laughs> brain amongst all the cobwebs. There's uh, a special some things part are, of the brain yes, for The Bachelor. Are, <laughs> bringing uh, Bachelor memories to the surface. Well, listen, so many Bachelor memories still to come. Uh, Gina, as far as timeline goes, uh, they're taping The Bachelorette now with Jen, right? That's basically the next they one in the are. hopper. They are. They are in a new Bachelor mansion. They wow. are on the move. They're going to be doing a lot of great things. Um, and I can't wait to see. And I guess we'll see her season over the summer. Sure. And then we will hopefully find out more about our Golden Bachelorette. It's what we're all waiting I'm for. I'm dying to we're know. Do we have guesses? I mean, listen, we, we've we thrown out some names. Have we heard anything more in terms of who this could be? No one is talking, which is making me very angry. <laughs> do you think, do you, okay. I, mean, <laughs> I think we could do like- No an one's in telling, no one's filling. Is it a past contestant or someone from the outside. What do you think, Ryan? I think it's going to be somebody from the outside. I think I don't inside. Think so. I think, you think inside. it's going to be I think an inside it's going to be a Golden Bachelor at Golden really? Golden it's going to be somebody from the Golden Bachelor. But you could I just think. as easily be right. <laughs> I, I just think for this first Golden Bachelorette, they want to have a big name. Nothing against the Bachelorettes that were on the Golden Bachelor. I think I they want to have a headline maker. That Listen, if I'm if I'm in charge, and God help us if that ever happens, uh, if I'm in charge <laughs> calling the shots here for the network, I want a big name that's going to draw the attention and draw the viewers. That's but how the I'm thing is, that Ryan, the thing is, this season, 
Uh, all the women on that show were so endearing. And they what, were. They are what made the show. I mean, Gary Absolutely. was great. Don't get me wrong. But what made the show were these women and really kind of throwing the message out there as someone of a certain age, I can say this, <laughs> you know, that like we are not invisible when to, once you hit a certain age. Yes. And the the country, like people who didn't watch The Bachelor don't watch The Bachelor normally or were watching Golden Bachelor or go, were watching Golden Bachelor and loved these women. So I don't think that they will be looking to the outside because what they have, um, as far as that cast goes, they were all just so they're so endearing and so lovely and you you're rooting for them. I'm rooting for every single one of them. I want them all to find love. And I think there's so a, I, that's what I think. Is no, that. and listen, <laughs> just, what, what, what makes our podcast fun is that we don't always agree. And I yeah. think there's compelling arguments to be made yeah. either way. I will say that because this will be the first golden bachelorette, that they can kind of go in whatever direction they want to, right? Sure. I mean, there's no precedent here. They mm-hmm. can say, okay, we're going to pull someone from, you know, wherever, maybe a past TV show, uh, one that was filmed in this very building, uh, live with Regis and Kathy <laughs> Lee, maybe. <laughs> Lee. <laughs> who knows? I mean, who knows which which direction they'll go in. But is that really the next big piece of news we're waiting on, Gina, at this point, now that they're taping The Bachelorette with our girl Jen? Is that the next big thing to come out? Yeah, uh, and you know, sorry for your your loss of of Jen. She's gonna find a man, and, and you know, you I'm know, very I was sorry. Just for starting you. to you get over that shot. until you brought that up. You should have shot your shot when we had her on the podcast, <laughs> and then she wouldn't have she would have said no. And then I'm sure she would have turned it down in a heartbeat. Aww. Absolutely, I'm I'm just saying. You could still but yeah, show up. So right now, yeah, that's what we're waiting for. Um, we don't know for sure, you know, we always hear about Bachelor in Paradise, but we don't know for sure. There's been no talk about it. There's no chatter about it right now. I mean, obviously, Bachelor Nation is talking about who they would want to see on the show. Sure. But there's no confirmation that it's going to happen and that they're going to film because what they might be doing is as soon as they're done with Gen season and that starts to air, they may be starting Golden. to film Golden right. Bachelorette. So. You know, maybe they skip a season and then they go to Golden Paradise. Oh, boy. In the oh, nudist yeah. colony? <laughs> Maybe not. I mean, but they you all have great. said that before, Ryan. There's gonna be a I'm lot like, of blurry nope. images to make this nope. a family show. A lot show. of the nope. black boxes. Yeah, a lot just, of the black boxes. The box. whole lower <laughs> portion of the screen's just blacked out. And this not would happening. be that would be the most shocking season of The Bachelor ever. We could definitely <laughs> promise that. I would and watch you'll be watching it all. Absolutely. In paradise. We'd I think all they're be all watching. they're all a lot of fun. Well, listen, we can't wait to bring everybody the next episode of Playing the Field. Still so much to talk about in Bachelor Nation. Again, our thanks to Daisy for being here. Our thanks, as always, to Gina and Jen and to you for watching or listening. I'm Ryan. We will see you here on the podcast again real soon.